Hi, children. I am so happy to be bringing you another story for you to watch and a craft to do. I hope you're having a good time. We're certainly missing you and would really rather that we get to see you in person. But this is better than nothing. So we're going to keep making these as long as we need to so that you have something special to do um, when you're at home and you're thinking of us and know that we're thinking of you. Let's pray first and then we'll get started. Father in heaven, we're so thankful that you gave us the Bible and that wherever we are, we can study it, read it, read it together as a family or as our church group and learn things from it so that we can know you better, love you more, and know how much you love us and all that you have done for us. Help us with today's lesson that we would learn something. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I brought some things for you to see, plus we have our verse and flannel graph, so we've got a lot of things to look at. But I want to start out by showing you something that I found in the sidewalk as I was walking around the streets. And actually, this is a little tree. And I don't know how much you know about plants, so I thought I'd bring one in because we're going to talk a lot about plants and fruit that grows from trees and bushes and things like that. So I thought this might be helpful. Now, what I did was I pulled them up because they're in dirt. But if you can see the very bottom of these you can tell that they have roots. The little things that come out that go into the dirt, those are called roots. And the purpose of a root is to go down into the dirt and pull up things that will help to make these trees grow to be huge trees, like water. And the soil that they're in, or sometimes we call soil dirt, has minerals and other good things in it that need to go up these little tiny roots and up the stem of the plant and into the leaves, and it makes it bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not the roots that make it grow, it's what the roots pull up that make the tree grow, or to make it produce fruit, or whatever it's going to grow. Well, the same thing is true for us as people. And we eat good food like hamburgers, and cheese, and grapes, and milk, because when we eat this, it makes us grow. And I think of the straw sort of like roots. And when I drink some milk through my straw, the good things in the milk go inside and help me to grow. And the same thing is true for you. Well, I want you to think about the Bible and the stories that we tell from it and praying to God as things that we do to help us grow spiritually. Spiritually is, remember we talked about the inner being um, in the Psalm 103 lesson that we did? What's inside us that gets to know God and helps us in how we feel about God and what we do. Well, these stories are like the food that we eat or like the things in the dirt for the tree that when we have a children's church lesson or you read your Bible if you're old enough to read by yourself or if your family has devotions or your mom and dad pray with you, those are things they come up inside us and help us to grow spiritually. And what we're talking about in the next few lessons is about the fruit that grows in your life. It's not real fruit. You don't like start sprouting bananas and oranges. But the things that we learn in the Bible, the Holy Spirit, like Miss Marion talked about, helps those things to go inside us. And all of a sudden, we realize, oh, there are things I learned in the Bible about the way Jesus was. Like today, we're going to talk about love and joy. And Jesus showed love. And Jesus showed us about joy. And those things start showing up in our life. And we can see that's our spiritual inner person producing fruit. So we will start with the verse that we're going to use for a few weeks from Galatians. Galatians 5. 22 and 23a, that means the first part of the verse 23, says, but the fruit of the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I put a little tree down here in the corner so that you can think of the fruit on this tree being those things that the Bible says we will have. And if you peek down under the grass, you see some roots down in there? That's the tree. It's pulling the things up to produce the fruit. 
And we pull things out of the Bible, the Holy Spirit pulls them out of the Bible and helps us to have fruit. So that verse is, just keep it in mind, you'll see it each week. And then the stories that we tell to go along with it. I'm going to tell you stories about love and joy today and how to, that fruit is produced in our life. Okay, the first lesson is going to be sort of a review because we've talked several times about Jesus dying on the cross. At Easter time, we talked about it. And so you're probably pretty familiar with it. And the verse that I'm going to read to you comes from John. And I think that some of you might even know this verse by heart already. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that first part says, For God so loved the world. God showed his love by sending Jesus to die on the cross. And remember, we talked about that, that Jesus loved us too. And even though he didn't really want to die, he wanted to die in order that we could be saved and spend eternity in heaven with him. And that's a way that the fruit of love was showed in Jesus' life. And you know what? As we think about that and learn more, there are lots of stories that tell about Jesus loving people and God loving people. As we think about that and learn about that and pray for God to help us to be like that, that Holy Spirit brings it up through the roots, just like through the straw, the milk comes up into your mouth and it makes us grow. And all of a sudden we see, you know what? I did something that showed I loved somebody else. And even sometimes when it's hard, we find that the Holy Spirit inside us helps us to do that. And we show the fruit of love because Jesus showed us what that looked like. And the Holy Spirit helps us to be more and more like that as we grow up into our Christian life. Now, when um, you have a tree that like maybe grows apples, a lot of people have apple trees in their yard or, or you've seen one, it's not that somebody went around and tied an apple onto a tree and made it into an apple tree. That's not how you make fruit. You don't put it on there. It comes all by itself. And the same thing is true with love, the first thing we're talking about today. It's not like you have to go around and think, now, I wonder how I could show love today. And, um, okay, at 3 o'clock, I'm going to, like, you know, go give someone a hug. That's not how, we're, how it works. The Holy Spirit inside us helps it to come out really all by itself. We do keep reading the Bible and we do keep praying that God will help us with that. But as we grow up physically, all of a sudden you can like shoot basketballs or you can draw pictures or write in cursive or something that you didn't used to be able to do because you're growing up. And the same thing is true about the fruit of the Spirit. We're not trying to put it on there. We are just seeing that as we grow up, reading our Bibles and praying that God brings those things out in our life. So that's the first story. Now I'm going to tell you a second flannel graph story about joy. Jesus told a lot of stories to people to help them to understand things that maybe were kind of hard to understand. And the story about joy that I'm going to tell you comes from Luke chapter 15, and it's about a man who was a shepherd. So you probably know that shepherds are people that watch sheep. So Jesus said, there was a man and he had a hundred sheep. And he would take them out to the pasture and they would eat grass and eat bushes and stuff too, and they would find water to drink, and he would keep them safe from bears and lions and things that would want to hurt them or eat them. And then at night he would go and put them in a little enclosure so they would be safe, sort of like a little barn. And then the next day he'd take them out. And that's what a shepherd does. He takes care of the sheep. Well, one day the shepherd took his sheep out. They were eating all day. 
And then he took them back at night and put them into the little fold for the night. And he always counted them to make sure he didn't miss any. Well, when he counted, 98, 99, huh, only 99. He was missing a sheep because one sheep during the day had kind of wandered off and was out of sight. And he didn't hear the shepherd or else he didn't listen and go home when he was supposed to. So, the shepherd did not say, oh, well, 99 is pretty good. No, he went out looking for that sheep because there were steep cliffs and maybe it got caught in a bush or fell over a little edge and couldn't get out. So he went out and looked and looked and looked all over trying to find that sheep. Where is that missing sheep? Well, he finally did find it. And he carried it home. And you know what he did? He didn't just put it in and say, phew, that's pretty good. He was so happy. He was so filled with joy inside and so thankful that he found it that he called all his friends in and they had a party. And that's how Jesus wanted to show us the joy that God feels and the angels have like a party when someone who doesn't know Jesus says, oh, somebody told me about Jesus. I want Jesus to be my Savior and live in my heart. And the Bible says that they throw a party in heaven. There is joy in heaven. They are so thrilled. And when we confess our sins, if we've done something that's wrong, that makes God sad. And when we say, oh, I know I should have obeyed and I didn't. I'm sorry. You say you're sorry to your mom or your dad. And you say, God, please forgive me. There's joy. That's joy that God feels. And he wants us to have joy like that too. Because really, when you say you're sorry, doesn't it really make you feel happy and peaceful inside? And you're filled with joy. And that's one of the things. Joy is my yellow straw. That when we're asking God to make us more and more like Jesus, and we let the Holy Spirit teach us lessons from the Bible... We get a little bit more inside that helps us to grow like a Christian. And all of a sudden we find, even though it's hard to say I'm sorry, you, you do it. And you say, oh, I feel good. That's that joy. The Holy Spirit is helping us to have joy. So today, the two fruits that we talked about were love and joy. And now we're going to do a little craft that will help you remember those. And it'll just be sort of part of a craft because we're going to do it for the next three lessons too until you have one big craft at the end that'll show all the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, here's the craft that we're going to do. And we're going to make a tree that's sort of like the one that was on that poster. So you should find a green kind of squiggly piece and a white piece that looks like that and then a bunch of these little brown ones. So the two stories we did should go with the pieces that say love and joy. So you should be able to find two of those. Boy, I can't get this picked up. There we go. Love and joy. Then you'll need your crayons and some glue and some scissors and your package of stickers. So what we want to do first is get your glue ready, glue stick or regular glue. And we're going to glue this white piece right onto the green leafy tree part. So I already trimmed mine a little bit because it was kind of big. And if you can take some scissors and just kind of cut it like that, I think it'll work a little better. And you want to make sure that when you put the white on the green, that these things come about to the bottom of your green so they're all kind of in a row. So what I'm going to do is just put some glue on here, like that, and then carefully set this on so it's kind of in the middle. And like I said, so that these are just a little bit above where the green starts. And then we can press it down so that it sticks. 
Maybe you want some newspaper or something else, or maybe you want to work on a table that you don't mind if a little bit of glue gets on it. So this is going to be our tree, and we're going to have roots on the bottom. This is sort of like where the ground is. This is the trunk, and this is the tree at the top. So then find this funny looking piece that says love. And on the bottom, it tells us what from the Bible we learned. Jesus on the cross. So when Jesus died on the cross, he was showing the fruit of love. And this is like a puzzle. If you put that right over here, it should match that little edge. So what we'll do is we'll put some glue on the back of this. Mm, not too much because it will ooze all over, but enough so that it stays in place. And maybe a glue stick is even better because that kind of spreads it out already. And then when you turn it around, you want the love to be at the top. That's where fruit comes out, is on the top of the tree, not in the bottom. And the roots should look like they're down underneath the ground, like that. See, there's our first fruit. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this piece that says joy. And I trimmed a little bit off the tops of those two because they were kind of big. And just like a puzzle, see how that's going to fit perfectly like that? I'm going to try the glue stick this time. So I'll put a little of this glue on the back of my root and the part that goes up the trunk and all the way up to where the fruit is going to show up at the top of the tree. And there are little bumps that fit right next to each other. And then they split at the top because in a real tree, the branches go like fingers. They don't all go to one spot. So we have love, where Jesus died on the cross and showed us love. Joy, says the lost sheep. Remember how happy and joyful the shepherd was when he found that sheep and he had a party. So now you can see it's kind of going to look like a tree. And then if you take your stickers, you should have enough stickers for this, all these lessons and pick whatever ones you want. But I'm going to put a strawberry at the end showing there's the fruit that's going to show up in my life. I'm going to see that the Holy Spirit helps me to love people. And I think orange is a pretty joyful color. So I'm going to put this orange at the end of joy. And when the Holy Spirit helps me, I will have joy when I ask for forgiveness, say I'm sorry, or when I'm happy because someone else got something special, even if I didn't, because that's joy. Save your stickers for the other lessons. Don't use them. And now an additional thing you can do, and you can do this whenever you want to, you might want to color some grass down at the bottom. We'll have some roots all over it, but it'd be fun to have a little grass showing up there and maybe a little blue sky showing here between the ground and my tree. And you can draw flowers or whatever else you would like, or maybe... Now I can put more green in between these branches to make it look a little bit more like a real normal tree. But if you don't like to color, you don't have to add a lot. And if you really do, be creative and make your craft special. Because I think when we're all done, you're going to want to hang this on your refrigerator or on the wall or somewhere because it's going to remind us of all the fruit of the Spirit that God helps us to produce in our lives as we get to know him more and more. And I just want to remind you how much we're missing you and hope that we get to see you soon.